In this example, we're going to use the formula that's given to solve for the interest rate when the formula is compound, a formula for calculating compound interest. To solve this problem, we're going to need to use a quadratic equation, or we're going to get a quadratic equation, and we'll need to be able to solve a quadratic equation. Now, the first step to a problem such as this, where we're given a formula, is going to be to write the formula. So I know the formula is right here in front of us, but I'm going to go ahead on my paper and write that formula. The amount A equals the principal P times the quantity of 1 plus the interest rate R raised to the number of years T. So I'll write the formula, and then I'm going to write what it is I know. We're given uh, some three different things in our problem. We have $350,000 that's dollars that's growing, so I need to interpret that to understand that that $350,000 is the amount that I start with, the principal. So I can start by saying that P, principal, is $350,000. A is the amount that's in the account when we're done, so after two years. So we're told that this 350000 grows to $487,340. So we know that A, or the amount, is $487,340. And then finally, we're given that the number of years, T, is 2. So the first step was that I wrote the formula. The second step was that I wrote out what I know. And the third step is going to be to fill in what I know into the formula. So in place of A, I'm going to put 487,000 340. In place of P, I'm going to put 350,000. In place of T, because I'm solving for R, in place of T, I'm going to put 2. Let me walk through what I just did here. So in place of A, because A equals 487,340, I put 300 or 487,340. In place of P, because P is equal to 350,000, I wrote the 350,000. And in place of T in the formula, I replaced the T with a 2. Did you notice, by the way, and I should have written this, I didn't. Let me go back and do this. Did you notice that what we're trying to do is find the rate? So a very important step in problem solving is to start with understanding what the problem's asking us for. And I want to understand that I'm looking for the rate. So it's a really, it's actually a good practice back in step two when I wrote out what I knew to also write what it is that I want to know. I want to know what the interest rate is. So I could note that by writing R equals and then have a box around it. All right, well, we're all ready to solve our equation for the rate. To do that, I'm going to start by getting rid of this 350,000 because I want to isolate the rate, the R. So I'm going to divide by 350,000. And so I'm going to have to do that to the other side also. So I'll divide both sides by 350,000. Uh, I'm going to do that on my calculator and see if I get a nice even number, but we'd have um, 487,340 divided by 350,000, and it doesn't give me a nice precise whole number, but it, it it's not irrational either, so it did simplify to, to, to this um, decimal, right? So we have 1.3924, and that's not rounded, equals this 1 plus the interest rate squared. And here's how we solve this quadratic equation from this point. 
since we have this binomial squared, we have this 1 plus the interest rate R squared, we can use the square root property to take the square root of both sides. So we'd have the square root of 1 plus R quantity squared is equal to the square root, the positive or negative square root of 1 plus 1 point 3924. Now what happens here on the right is that this square and square root undo each other. So on the, the right, I'm just left with 1 plus R because the square and square root cancel each other out. And on the left, I've got that plus or minus the square root. So to solve for the interest rate, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And I'd get that the rate is um, negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1.3924. And uh, right off the bat, I can see that the interest rate can't possibly be a negative, right? So I know that uh, I can throw out the negative 1 minus that square root and just do negative 1 plus the square root. And when I do the square root of 1.3924, I get this exact answer, 1 and 18 hundredths. So 1.18 minus 1 is equal to 0.18. And if I, since I'm looking for an interest rate, if I change that to a percent, to do that I'd multiply by 100, or in other words, move the decimal two to the right, so that's 18%. So it looks like the interest rate is 18%. I hope that this video has helped you with this example. If you need further explanation on any step here, please let me know. I'd be happy to go over this problem in more detail. But in general, what we're doing is we start by writing the formula, and then we write out what we know and what we want to know. So what values are we given and what are we looking for? And then we plug those values in. Step three, we plug those values into the formula and solve for our variable r because this one was a quadratic and we had this quantity squared, isolated, we could do the square root of both sides to get rid of that radical and we were left with one plus r is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1.3924. Solving for r by, by subtracting one from both sides gave us the uh, 1800s, which is 18% interest rate.